Okay, so I did have a few people ask me how I set up, how I find the implied move and the historical move. So I'm just gonna really quickly uh, do a walkthrough. It's actually pretty simple, and this is all done in TradingView. I don't know how to do it in other charting platforms, but within TradingView, the first step is to, um, we're on the 30 minute time frame, and you actually need to hit one month down here because that's going to pull up one month of price data on the screen. And then what you do is you take this long tool right here and you click right at where we closed, uh, which is 443.28. And I do, um, I do usually get it exactly. So 443.28. And then I do that two times uh, because the second one is the options range, which if you go over to the options chain for, this is tomorrow's um, contract already, and the proper way to find implied move is it's a at the money straddle. So you're gonna sell one at the money call and one at the money put. And so that credit you multiply that credit by 80% and that is actually going to be your implied move and a super secret way to do that is just look at the corner of the contract it actually gives you the implied move right there so implied volatility a dollar 49 in each direction that is your implied move and in um, Tasty Trade, which is what I use, uh, it actually shows you the implied move right here. But I actually calculated a little bit differently. So now you know the proper way to do it, but the way I do it is I sell one at the money call, and I'm sorry, it, it, the two, uh, one in the money call, and in the money put. So I actually, it is a strangle, in, um, and you can see that here the implied move is 149 but my version brings it out $2.45 and you can try it both ways this my way just seems to work better for me so maybe it's not the official way but I also did show you with the official way here that is so then I take this 245 range um, and I go into this second one and so 562 is what the price action says and options say 245 so 245 in each direction and that gives you and I do make that second one a little bit darker just to make it easier to see and boom now you have the range and then once you have this range up then all you really need to do is look back and see you know where is support where is resistance what lines are running through it what gaps are there and that's really it so that is how you find those ranges uh, for the next day so i hope that helps and have fun tomorrow